we got a new vehicle for the for the garage. Um, as you know, I live in Washington, and the weather's usually not great this time of year. So um, we have the demon still, obviously. It's just hiding right here, hooked up to the trickle charger, because um, it probably won't be driven for the rest of the winter, unfortunately. But it looks really orange in this, but it's actually red. Um, so yeah, we got the. Uh, we still got her Mercedes, and we have my truck. This is probably getting sold um, at the end of the month. We're just working on uh, financing paperwork for the for the buyer, but that should be leaving soon. But don't worry, I'll definitely do another truck build once this is gone. Um, still trying to figure out which one. And then obviously the only thing missing is the the Jeep which should be right here or it'll be parked over there in the cul-de-sac but let's talk about the new car so I wanted something that can deal with the weather and everything here um, so obviously I needed something all-wheel drive I didn't need it but I would prefer something all-wheel drive and um, I actually was looking at like Lamborghini or stuff like that but I figured um, probably at 25 years old it's not, it doesn't make the most sense to be driving a Lamborghini just yet so um, I talked to the guys over at where we actually got this Mercedes at, and he recommended this. So this is a 2019 AMG, or I guess 2019 Mercedes AMG GT 63S four-door, and it is amazing. So I've uh, only put probably like 100 miles on it. I've had it for about a week now. Um, I just got it uh, paint corrected because it was kind of messed up from the dealer. Nothing crazy, but we did paint correcting, um, then we did a polish, and then I got the wheel ceramic coated because Mercedes likes to make a lot of brake dust. So everything's looking good. I've been like, it's pretty much only been driven in the rain it seems like now, and it looks, it looks awesome. Um, but uh, just like I got window tint, and then we did a full paint protection film from the, the front clip on. So, um, I'll try to pull it out later and, and do some overall uh, shots of it, but I just wanted to introduce it. Sorry, there's not much room in the garage, and I'm just trying to make do with what I have. But as you can see, when the black is clean, which is not even totally clean right now, it looks amazing. So, let's see if I can just step back a little bit. So, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, let's... Uh, and then we'll go for a little drive. Uh, it needs gas anyway, so I'll, I'll put some 93 in it. Actually, we only have 92 here, so I'll put some 92 in it. So I got in Sport Plus mode right now. Uh, we're just gonna back out of the parking lot. We're not parking lot, but of the garage. And then we'll be off. So this vehicle does have a lift on it, so it helps getting into those low or like high incline areas. My driveway is a little bit inclined. But uh, I actually really don't need the lift for that, but um, it's nice to have just in case, and obviously wherever I drive. So um, I'm gonna kind of take it easy for the beginning stuff, because uh, the car still needs a warm up and everything. So one thing I have to get used to is in the wet weather, this car grips, like no matter what. So it's, uh, it has the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, I believe, I could be wrong. I, I'm pretty sure it's not the, the Sport Cup, it's just the um, Sport 4S, I don't even know if that's the actual uh, tire. But it's a summer performance tire, and I've actually had no issues with traction in the rain so far. And then I kind of drive it, like just trying to test those batteries to see what, what will like make it slip. But as of right now, nothing's, um, 
So it, this doesn't get the best gas mileage. Obviously, it's a twin turbo, bi turbo, whatever they call it, um, V8. And um, I'm averaging like more, about 13 miles per gallon. But granted, I've only had it for like 100 miles. And most of that's been in traffic because we're about 25 miles from Seattle and we live in the suburbs and there's a shit ton of traffic, so. This is my first trip to the gas station. I'm gonna fill up with, uh, with the Shell, the V-Power, because um, just until I can figure out where the good 92 octane stations are. I know most of them around here are top tier, so I shouldn't really have to worry, but I know you can't really go wrong with Shell. Um, the Demon, I actually don't have to worry about the 92 because I'm running E85, as some of you guys know, um, which has actually been a, one of the issues and one of the reasons I actually got this car too is so I don't have to worry about where I can get fuel because E85 is not plentiful up here in Washington. We actually only have like in the northwest Washington, we have maybe five stations and that's within like a three hour uh, radius. So it's not very much. And if you're low on E85, you're not gonna wanna drive three hours and I hope you get somewhere. So, um, the one on base actually was uh, really good for a while. I was testing it every time and it tested like at E85 or higher every single time. But the last time I tested, I don't know if it was a bad batch or what, and I don't know if it's dealing with the winter blends, but it, it tested at like below like E60, I got it was, it was outrageous. So, um, so it's nice to have a vehicle that I don't have to worry about uh, the, the ethanol levels on. So I'm gonna fill up really quick. All right, so I only put in $25 worth because it's $4 a gallon of, for gas here, and that's outrageous. So. All right. I'm not really sure where I'm going to drive today. There's uh, not many places to kind of open this up, but um, we'll throw it into Sport Plus mode. Turn that guy off. And then we'll keep traction control on because it's still a little wet today. But let's, let's take her for a drive. Just in those clouds behind the RVs, that's Mount Rainier. But as you can see, it's a cloudy day and you cannot see it at all, which is weird because it's a big ass mountain that's hidden by clouds. Um, so we'll just start going over some of the reasons why I bought this car. Like I was saying, I was gonna get the Lamborghini because it was all wheel drive and it was, um, obviously it's Lamborghini, most people want one, so. Um, I was looking at them, but I really wanted to stay below. I was actually going to sell the Demon, and then I wanted to stay below $200,000 after selling the Demon. So the only Lamborghini that I, I could really afford and I really wanted was the Huracan Evo. So it's the new one. But those are still close to $300,000 total. And like I was saying, that's like... We got ambulance behind us. Can't really get out of the way, so. Which way is he going? Because 
he has his lights on, but he's not keeping the sirens on. So I don't know how much of an emergency. But like I was saying, Huracan Evo, um, three, around 300,000, uh, depending on where you look. Uh, and that's just a little bit out of, the, out of my price range for now. And I don't know if I'll ever want to spend $300,000 for a car. So, um, I was still shopping around, but I was talking to the guy, um, the finance manager over at the Mercedes dealership that um, we bought our GLE. And he actually recommended uh, looking at one of these cars. And I've never actually, I mean, I've always liked to look at the GTs, which is a two door, but I, I didn't even know they had a four door version. Um, and uh, so he uh, told me to just go on a test drive. And I mean, that just shows how much they kind of trust me that I'm 25 years old. Uh, I mean, I look really young too, and they're just like letting me drive. So this car, MSRP is at 186,000, and they just told me I can test drive it no problem. So that that was pretty cool. Um, so obviously, when I test drove it, I fell in love with this thing. I'm not. I've never really been a European uh, car guy. I've. Uh, I mean, uh, pretty much all my vehicles are are American. I've had one like foreign car before this, and that was. A Nissan Frontier, but that was my dad, so I didn't really have a choice. Um, but everything that I've owned personally has been um, has been American. So uh, when I test drove it, I absolutely fell in love. This when this all-wheel dr drive hooks, which it does pretty much every time. Um, I it, I just had so much fun. So. Uh, so yeah, then I just like I really I just did the math in my head and we figured like this is four doors So obviously I can fit Eli in it um, So we figured this would be the best bang for the buck pretty much um, Yeah, so I've had it for a hundred miles now and I have no regrets with it. It's been it's been a hell of a car and uh, I try to drive it really honestly as much as I can I, I did lease it though because uh, I knew I wouldn't keep it forever and I um, so I didn't want to be tied up at the 186,000 because most of these go for MSRP. I, I haven't seen one that goes under. Um, so, um, so I spent way less than 180,000, obviously, with the lease, and I actually did a 10,000 mile um, lease, which is actually a lot for this car. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't imagine most people drive this expensive a car 10,000 miles a year. Um, obviously, there's some YouTubers that do, but um, I live only 13 miles from work, so it's. Uh, I, I don't really put that many miles on the car. Um, oh, I was going to show you there's an uh, accident over there, but you probably can't see it because of the bus. It looks like a motorcyclist just lost control, but he, he seems to be fine. Okay, so let's talk about some of the features of the car. Um, so it's a 4.0 liter bi-turbo. Uh, it has 630 horsepower, and I want to say... 600 foot-pounds of torque. I could be wrong. I'm gonna correct it on the screen whatever it actually is Because um, everyone I tell I tell a different number and I'm obviously wrong with one of them um, It actually might be like 650. It might be higher. It could but um, like I said, I'll put it on the screen right here um, So all-wheel drive so all that power is pretty much a, like right there from the get-go the torque the peak torques at 2500 rpm obviously with the turbo so you're getting that torque almost immediately and then that peak uh, horsepower you're looking at um, I think 5500 rpm so and then we redline at um, about 7,000 in this car so kind of close to the red line but um, I'll actually take you into these nicer neighborhoods just to take a look but um, so yeah, all-wheel drive, and then we got some 275 uh, wide tires in the front, and then 315s in the rear. So we got some fat tires in the rear, and they, they hook really well. Um, so like I said, I live in actually the suburbs of Seattle, so the the houses are actually pretty pretty nice. Um, obviously, the Seattle houses are nicer, but this is a, a fairly new neighborhood, and these houses probably go for like at least 600000 um, my neighborhood's brand new too, but we're at a little bit lower end, um, and they, they start around like 475000 So, I'll drive through here while I'm talking about other specs. But, uh, so it, it does take 92. The minimum octane is 91, but obviously you put in a little bit higher octane, you'll get a little bit better performance. Um, the steering feels great on this, uh, especially with the different steering modes, but I'll, I'll compare all the, the driving modes in another video 
but uh, the, the only complaint I have is that the exhaust is not very loud for for this expensive of a car or even like a sports car in general like yeah you can put it I have in sport plus mode and it does get a little bit louder but I'm used to my my 6.2 liter like demon engine where it's stupid loud so um I just gotta get used to that but I think also the the sound deadening in in the vehicle like once you're in the cabin like it, it cancels a lot of the sound which is doing its job I suppose but once again I'm not used to that um but there's actually some really nice houses in this neighborhood. I already, I drove this area one time, but um, you can see the rainbow over the houses. So right on the other side of the house, it's just a freaking like cliff pretty much. And it goes straight down into like a valley. Um, so I wouldn't mind having that view. I don't know how well you can see it. You probably can't see it. So. Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, so we'll go over the interior specs when I, when I park the car, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much the exterior, uh, it does come with the aero package, so it has a little bit more aggressive, um, front phasia and everything, and it has the spoiler in the rear, the fixed spoiler, uh, a little bit more aggressive, but it doesn't move, um, when you're driving and braking and stuff like that. would not mind having that house. It's easier to pull in, the driveway's nice. But we were kinda out of time crunch when we were moving up here from Mississippi. Uh, Cause like every, all the houses I wanted sold like immediately. So um, I kinda had slim pickings and I didn't obviously wanna spend crap time cause I don't know how long we'll be here in Washington. So here's a better look. Sorry if there's a lot of wind noise, but it's obviously windy today. So 2019 AMG GT four door, well 63S. Do a quick walk around. So, like I said, it had the aero package in the front, so a little bit more aggressive front splitter and phasia and everything. Um, comes with the, the side skirts as well. And the fixed wing, which I'll get on the other side to show. But, yeah, it just has a pretty nice stance. I mean, it's a nice, nice ass to it for sure. Um, so the interior has the bucket seats, not a not a bench seat like most. Uh, uh, back seats uh, we have the obviously Eli's base in there so we can throw them in there anytime uh, you have charging ports right there and cup holders and then um, dual zone climate so each person can have their own like temperature set um, they are bucket seats so they hold you in when I'm driving crazy like normal Burmeister sound system it sounds amazing it doesn't have a lot of bass but the sound quality is so crisp that I, I really don't care about the bass because I don't really listen to music with a lot of bass anyway so so that's that's the back seat um, and the rear actually has a shit ton of room so we have this in there because the, the stroller gets all dirty and I don't want uh, making a mess back here but yeah I mean you can fit probably like two suitcases big ass suitcases maybe three in here no problem and then it's really convenient because you got the button right there but so yeah, these are 21 inch wheels, front and rear. They're not staggered, but um, like I was saying, they're 275s in the front. And 315s in the rear. So I thought these were special uh, like lug nuts, but obviously not lug nuts, but this is actually just a cover and the lug nuts are behind here. But I like the look, it makes it look like it's a, you need a special tool. What you do is you take this off, but you don't need a special tool to obviously take off the lug nuts. Uh, rotors are uh, drilled and slotted, and then it has a nice yellow um, bricks. Uh, yeah, these bricks were coated a couple days ago, and it's already really dirty. So I'll, I'll get home and, and spray it off. But um, I, I might ceramic coat the actual vehicle itself. But it's a lease, and I don't really know how much money I want to put into it. So. Um, so yeah, that's the car. I mean, it's awesome. Uh, it's definitely badass. It's a little out of my like comfort zone. Like I said, I'm not European. Um, 
I don't, I'm not really into European cars, but um, obviously I've been buying some Mercedes Benz. I like what they make. I don't know about the reliability yet because I haven't really had it long enough, but um, but they've been badass cars, and the all-wheel drive in them is amazing. So, yeah, and the the nine-speed is also amazing. I don't know what this guy's doing. I don't know if you can see that Toyota SUV in the background, but. Um, one thing that with Washington we have to have front plates and uh, I don't even know where to put it. I don't have a mount for it or anything so I'm not even sure if I'm going to put it. I might just get my Florida plates. But um, it's a little cold out so that's why I hopped in. But we'll go over the interior really quick uh, since I'm parked here. So carbon fiber everywhere, uh, at least in the, the panels and everything. Um, they have it in the rear too. The only thing that's weird with this sound system is you don't have a sunglass holder and you don't have like a light in the back right here. I don't know. Um, so you have the small ones over there, but they're not very bright. But we don't really use them that often anyway, so. Yeah, I don't know what this guy's doing. They're just driving around just like me. I wish, I guess there is a way to get in the back over there. You just gotta drive around. No, there's no way to get back there. I really don't know why they have these blocking the rest of the parking lot when I don't, they're not using it for anything so so yeah carbon fiber um, and then we can I guess go through the the front pages and everything so, so I'll just turn the car on once so steering wheel adjust when you get in and out um, obviously everyone knows that the LED lighting in the Mercedes are super nice they even have, you can't see it, but at night when the lights are on, they go around all the speakers. There's a light around the speakers and, and, and the vents and everything. You can see that. But um, So here's the home screen. This is what I run it on. Obviously, there's different modes. So if I click, if I click the home button, actually, and then we can, we can adjust the designs. So I have it in sport. There's... Super Sport, which is very simple, shows one screen, pretty much everything you just need to know when you're driving fast. I, I just showed you the Sport before, and this is classic. This is kind of what it looks like in um, the GLE, um, which I, I like the look, but it, it's um, it's an AMG, so you, you kind of want to go with the AMG styling. So I, I don't really drive with this, because I mean, I'd like to see more than this, but this is really all you actually need. Um, no, I might run around with this for a little bit and see if I have any complaints. But you can adjust a few of the heads-up display things. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. Um, I, I use that a lot since I can, it lets me keep the eye on the road. But uh, normally I I do kind of trip information. Just, I, I, do, I know it's a sports car, but I do like to see what kind of fuel economy I'm getting. Because I don't, I don't obviously want to get like 8 miles per gallon. But it's not like it's really going to affect the way I drive. So... So I don't even know why I bother looking at it. Um, I'll keep the overall mileage on it because I need like I only have a 10,000 mile lease, so I need to know how much I'm driving. Um, so the storage area, the storage is not the best in, in here. So you have you have this, which is fine. I'm, this is to take the lug that lug nut protector off, um, and then you got your more ports in there, and then you can actually put an SD card in here for your like your music and everything. Um, so uh, this is what I, my biggest complaint in the interior, like I can barely fit my hand in here and there's two cup holders and then you're supposed to be able to use the wireless charger right there, but I can't even fit my hand in there. And then with these ports or these plugs in, I, I definitely can't. So I don't really use the wireless charging. I usually have the phone like on the side right here plugged in. Um, but it's nice to have when I don't have all that stuff plugged in. So the... Um, it has the new modern, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know how many inches, I forgot how many inches, but obviously this really long um, front screen here. They're, they're split up into two, and you can control the, the so like the driver's screen right here, you can control with this one, and then you control, obviously you can see right here with the uh, the right one. So, um, oops, i got to turn my music on. Okay, so, um, the only thing I don't like about this, and I love this screen, but it's not a touch screen, and the GLE is, granted this is a 2019, the GLE is a, um, a 20, but that shouldn't, I guess they switched, but I didn't feel like waiting on the, the 2020, uh, AMG GT to come out, because I wanted something kind of, like, now, so, 
Um, it is getting, uh, it's a pain getting used to because it's very distracting to switch from here. Um, but I just learned to like really not try to switch things because, uh, so I can keep my eye on the road. But, uh, you can control everything on the screen with this too. Um, this touchpad's really nice. I wish you can go back with songs. You can only go forward. Well, I guess you have to click it and then if I go up one, then I guess you can go back. But it's just like another step you have to take. Um, these lights, there's normally something on here the whole time. I would have to actually start it. This one doesn't have any use, so I don't even know why it's there. So this is the gear changer. Um, your gear shifter or whatever. So you can see the AMG. I don't know if it's focusing. But the insignia is right there. Um, so th it's not in a natural spot. So obviously people are used to like shifters right here. So if this was a shifter, it would be ideal. This is not. So it's like awkward to, to kind of put back here. Um, and then, but it's nice because you, you push it forward kind of, you can do like a half click, but which pushes in the neutral no matter what direction you go in or even though it shows like it's behind, or you just push it hard forward, you go in reverse, push it hard back. And when I say hard, just like give it a little bit more um, like power than you would um, just by putting it into neutral. So forward is reverse, backward is drive, um, as it shows here. And then, um, but it's just in a weird spot. So, and then uh, I watched a video where people were complaining about the park button. So. It, you can do it like this awkwardly I mean it works but I literally just like when I get somewhere just kind of turn my hand back and then press park it's really not that difficult just weird um, spot to just in general for this because it's like not natural natural is right here because when you're driving I don't know how well you can see but this is where I would keep my hand so I just kind of use this as like an arm holder and then I don't I kind of just rest my hand or my hands on the steering wheel right here but we'll go into the steering wheel actually so I have um, carbon fiber here and then I, I opted for the heated steering wheel because it gets a little cold here and I like when my hands are warm so I have these right here which is basically the same thing right here but it would be up here so that looked really cool and I really wanted it but I prefer heated steering wheel over that and um, then you have the AMC or a AMG uh, logo right here um, so like I said these are the controls for the the right screen these are the controls for the left screen and I obviously cruise control and everything so Cruise control is awesome. Um, it drives for your, it drives itself basically. You have to touch the steering wheel every once in a while, and it it won't like turn like from if I want to turn on this road left, it won't do that. But it'll it'll like curve with the roads and everything. It's it's really cool. Um, so so yeah, I mean this car is awesome. It has the rapid heating uh, heated seats. Uh, has the cooled seats and then I didn't I, I thought this was the rapid heated seat button but I, I learned that I was way wrong so if I press this and then I can actually control the the right seat I don't know if you can see that but it's insane so uh, I don't mean I don't really ever use that but it's, it's, it's a nice feature to have if like someone needs to get in the front seat or, or need more room in the back and no one's sitting in the front which I'm not a cab so that actually never happens but sound another speaker right here i don't know how many there are total but it's a uh, it's really nice um so yeah i mean this is the, a quick summary of the car i'll do more videos like five things i like five things i don't like um some zero to 60 I'll, I'll go through the drive modes and everything but this is just the overall um kind of welcoming video to the channel so we now have five cars we have the we'll try to do an order of the year so the 2020 gle mercedes-benz um, this is a 19, so 19 AMG DT. We have a um, 2018 Dodge Demon, 2017 Ford F-250, and a 2016 Jeep Wrangler, um, which is down in Phoenix getting the new engine, like I said in the last video. Um, but we have five total Demons in storage mode, so I'm not paying insurance really on that, which is nice. Um, but I'll also do another video on insurance costs for, for all my ve uh, vehicles. Uh, I am 25 so they're not super low but they're not actually as bad as i thought for for being my age and driving the vehicles that, that, that how much they cost it, it was surprising to see how the cost of the vehicles correlated with my age with the price that i'm paying it actually wasn't that high in my opinion um so yeah that'll be another video but um that's pretty much it uh, i'll do like i said i'll do more videos but I, i'm gonna snap a few photos and then um start editing this video but uh, thanks for watching, and I hope I can put out a lot more videos. I always say in every video I'm going to start doing more, but it's just 
it's hard to find the time and I, I, I can create any excuse I want I just really need to do it and, and get ahead of it but uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more guys